We lay that out right out of the gate yeah. because we don't want any confusion that, you know, they hire someone and all of a sudden, you know, they're looking at old school studios, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and working, you know, 2002 yeah. style. Yeah, 2002 style, I love that. 1992. <laughs> Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Having a solid partnership is essential. How did yeah. you guys know that you were the right fit? What was it that made you go, this is going to work? Well, well it's again, working, uh, by the uh, way, uh, just so you know. Mark and I worked together. So yeah. we, we had a really good idea yeah. when we first formed the company. Um, Andrew, Mark knew. So, and I had known Andrew to a degree, not as mm -hmm. well as Mark. Um, but we just realized it's like, yeah, no, he's a good fit. Um, let's do it. Let's make this happen. I put a so. good word in for Andrew. Yeah. I'm kidding. But, but, <laughs> but we start, I mean, we've been together like from the beginning. For, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is fantastic. I, I, I just want to add on to that because what I remember, and I don't know if you guys remember <laughs> this or not, but I remember because I was working for a performance artist and we were traveling around the country. And I remember reaching out to Mark to say congratulations because they had launched ACM. And I happened to be in New York within a few months or a few weeks or something like that. And we were just getting together to hang out. And I, like I had scheduled maybe an hour, maybe 30 minutes just to catch up. And what did we talk for like four hours? Mm -hmm. Like the sun set and we were still in the office talking <laughs> about the industry. It was beyond catching up. It was just yeah. like, wow, this is, this is cool. Yeah. And that's when, I think that's when we decided to work together. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really cool. I, I mean, because you guys are not just business partners. You're all you're also friends. Mm -hmm. And we have to be. Yeah, yeah, and you have to be, but yeah. it shows in how you do what you do. Yeah. Well, even though we're a small um, you know, company compared to, you know, a behemoth wide ranging entertainment company, right. we structure our business like a corporate company where you know our systems are real systems and we bring our own you know um, systems from where we came from plus you know we have to adapt to new technology etc yeah. yeah. plus you know we have our call a staff call every day you know i mean so while it's a different way of doing business uh, today um, and i think many companies if they could do it a certain a different way probably would because it's just you know you, you can um run a company like this in a very creative way right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. totally well i'm glad we know you guys Likewise. um and you guys are freaking awesome let's talk <laughs> demos Ooh. what are some key this is a great demo elements for you what do you think makes a great demo? What do you uh, need? Chuck makes a great demo. Well, <laughs> but, but, but what, what, when what, you what, listen, what do we look for? Because you hear the ones that are like, yeah. wow, and then the ones that are, are you kidding me? So mm -hmm. what are the things that are that are really key? Phil could actually it, it, he could actually pick up who put this demo together, which is really interesting. I I, I can tell fake because there are certain tells. Right. Um, and, and that's more based on, again, my television background yeah. than it is necessarily being an agent or a manager or, you know, all the past. But, you, you, you know, I have to believe it. And, you, you know, it does not have to be real. Mm -hmm. But if it sounds fake, I don't believe yeah. it. So if the voice doesn't match the spot, I don't believe it. I don't believe mm -hmm. it. So, you, you know, if... If I'm telling somebody to do a demo, it's like, make sure you do something that you believe you can do um, and make sure that when it's put together, it's being put together right. It's, and make sure your material, your strongest material is right, up front, right. obviously. Right. You know, every, I think every actor um, wants to put a production together um, and feels like a producer or an agent is going to listen to mm -hmm. their, you know, is going to see their entire show. Yeah. But they're not. Not only are they not going to see their show, they're basically walking in, sitting down, curtain opens, curtain closes, they're out. Yeah. And that's the six seconds, 10 seconds. I was going to say, what is your, ma everyone has their magic number of how long do you need to listen before you six go? Seconds six seconds or less is 
a, is all I need. Six, some seconds, sometimes. To know what? So what to is know, in there? To what know is, is in if, those seconds? If I want to have a conversation with this person. Mm. Based Six. on, hold on, this is, this is very interesting. Based on? Based on their sound, the marketplace, my feeling, our, our um, clients, what we think we might need. You know, Even just, skill level, because you can right. hit you hear can hear skill acting, level right away. It, 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 you can't hear as much skill level as you think. I, you, you know, we, we've actually made the mistake yeah. of hearing some great demos, and the people weren't necessarily oh, well, as good yeah, as the demos. Right when the demos easy. better yeah. than yeah, yeah. That's but um, it, it, again, it, if we hear it, what Mark's saying is similar to what I was saying, yeah. in that he believes that person has potential or has a future or can keep doing the work that yeah. he's hearing mm -hmm. you know within that 6 seconds but and the but the demo only goes so far because the next there are two hurdles it's the demo got it within those seconds got it got it but they need a great demo regardless because if if I'm going to get to 6 seconds I'm going to get to their demo so they need a great demo. Now, if period. you if you get past six seconds, yeah. will you listen to the whole thing? I would, if it's a I, minute? I pretty much. And I, you're digging it? I, I I pretty much will explore their show. Okay. Um, but but the next question is tell me what you have going on. Mm -hmm. And if they have interesting stuff going on, then we will probably and, have a phone. And call. what does that mean for the people out there? They're like, well, what do they mean by I have stuff say, going on? I say. Yeah. What are your current active uh, accounts that you're on right now? I don't care if it's a, a, a mix of, you know, TV affiliates or promos or narrations, whatever it is. Yeah. Just tell me what is active right now. Yeah. I just want to know what you, you know, where are you? Are you a hustler? Are you an entrepreneur? What did your agent, is your agent doing what they're doing? You know, a great job for you. Where are you? Right, that tells me where they are. Mm -hmm. So I have their whole picture within a couple emails. Exactly. Yeah. Got their demo, know where they are, and then that could turn into a phone call and maybe a signing. And, Is and it possible? Okay, oh, go, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, I just want to add on to that because because knowing where they are tells us, you know how invested the buyer is in working with them. Yeah. Because if they've just booked one sprint spot or one trailer or something like that, but they haven't booked anything else, then that it's a little bit of a red flag because how they got in the door, look, anybody can get, I'm not saying anybody, but you can get in the door and book a campaign or book a spot, but knowing where they are in their career tells us that they understand how to you know, maintain mm -hmm. these relationships mm -hmm. and become repeat clients. But, they, but it tells us that they know how to handle doing voiceovers. Yes. So if they tell me that they're doing promos for this network or they just, you know, they're actively the voice of this commercial, okay, they have the experience, they're working with producers, they're in their booth, they know what they're doing yeah. versus, wow, this is a great demo. Well, I'm trying to get in there and someone put a great demo together for me, you know. Is it possible when you hear a demo that isn't great, is it possible sometimes if the talent is good that you can rise above that or is that just too... Mary, like if it, 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 it's, I mean, you'll hear something special in someone's voice mm -hmm. on occasion. Yeah. But, you know, bigger picture back to like that service oriented idea. You know, one of the reasons why Mark asks, you know, what accounts you have, because it tells us that they not only just hustle to get the work, but they also, also service the work as mm -hmm. well. Exactly. Well, when you're putting together a demo, if you have not put in the work to get to the point of making a demo, it's like, why did you do it? Right. Um, you you think you're really going to get my attention off an iPhone or yeah. off, you, you know, your friend who has garage band and just laid some voice. music? Yeah, yeah. 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 And the willingness to invest into that as mm -hmm. well. I mean, sending a demo saying, "Look, I did this myself." Like, yes, we we certainly don't want to encourage somebody to do that, but at least sending it now, over. Now, I want to ask you something because yeah. a lot of people say, "Well, why? Why can't I make my own demo? Why?" shouldn't somebody just say, oh, I'm just going to make my own demo and send it to ACM? Well, I use the analogy <laughs> of a headshot. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you want to be a working actor, yeah. you're not going to submit or print a hundred, you know, selfies that you took off Instagram or, or cut your, your head out or send your senior picture from high school or something like that as your headshot. There is an industry standard. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the most important thing to understand yeah. is that as an industry standard, a professionally mixed demo is what stands is what separates you from yeah. an amateur to a professional. Well, well you, you might, you yeah, might it's learn making that. you, it's, it's also set, telling you that you are a professional, you're treating your business like that. And, and you have a commitment yeah. to the exactly. business. Yeah. Right. And I, it could I, take a year or two before you even 
uh, should send a demo out to anybody mm -hmm. because you should be coaching, mm -hmm. you should be working with a, a great demo producer and getting their vibe of, hey, am I, you know, does this look right? Because before it goes out, the thumbs up, you know, you should be getting the thumbs up from your um, mentors, your, you know, your coaches, your demo producers, you know, is this something that I have a shot at versus, you know, how many shots do you have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, right. I mean, I always tell people two things. A, and I do this every day probably as you guys mm -hmm. do because you guys get a lot of calls as well, but people are like, you know, when am I ready to make a demo? Or I want to make a demo. How, well, have you had any coaching? No. But I, they tell me, people tell me that if mm. I want to get into voiceover, I need a demo, you know? And, and this is for the people out there that don't know, that don't live in the major market and just don't know. The first thing anybody needs to do is learn the craft. You know what I mean? Uh, you can't just buy a great skateboard and think you're going to be Tony Hawk. Yeah. Right. You know, you have to learn how to use that tool, learn how to use, you know, this tool. Um, and, and then when you're good enough, then present yourself. Yeah. And I tell people the difference when you do that is that instead of showing or branding yourself as a person that wants to be a voice actor, you're branding yourself as a person who is a voice, a voice actor. Right. And yeah. that's when you guys listen and go like, I hear something. Well, that's why I said this the other day on social media. Don't send me or an agent a demo with an intro that says, hi, so I'm an emerging talent who blah, 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 blah. It's over. You're, you're yeah. done. Right. You're done. Yeah. Thank you for being honest. Right. Right. But you're being honest. Yeah. I, I mean, I was about to say, well, I appreciate you being honest, but... I don't know if I do. I, I, I think there's this, you know, you really have to present yourself as a professional, like you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I had a colleague who had a great line who he used to say that demos sell the future. Mm -hmm. And when I get a demo, what I'm analyzing is, can I have a future with this talent? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's um, good. So, you, you know, I, I'm one of those people. I, I had in agreement with the recording yeah. studio. I know what audio engineers do. Yeah. And to just skimp, to just think that you can get away with it, is just such a waste of time. You, you, yeah. it, even taking the time, the month to put together the lousy demo, probably cost you three or four or five months you could have had if you're doing it yeah. the right way. Yeah, yeah. and I there's a level that. of respect and integrity about it too. What do you guys- Andrew has something yeah, really oh, interesting Andrew. to add because we talk about coaching. I'm sorry, sorry, Stacey. Yeah, no, no, steal we, the mic, steal No, the I was gonna, I wanted you to add on show. coaching. It's my second time here. So I, I saw the little light bulb <laughs> on top of his head from here. Well, I just I just want to address coaching a little bit because yes. I feel that that coaching isn't, isn't look, if you want to get in shape and you and you work out naturally, maybe you feel you don't need a personal trainer to kind of get you into shape. So I understand that. But the purpose of a coach is to guide you into an area that you may not have realized mm -hmm. that you would be good at. If your personal trainer can, can look at you running and go, oh my gosh, you know what, you could be, you should be a long distance runner, you should be a, a, you know, an Olympian or a marathon runner or something like that, then there's value in that coach. And that's what voiceover coaches do. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who come to us because they have a deep voice or because they have a mid-range or because they're they're working actors and and people say you know giving them compliments uh, that they feel that they would excel in voiceover and the coach allows them to the coach works them works with them so that they find those categories that they're they can excel in whether that's commercial yeah. because traditionally yes the commercial demo is what most people need to start out but somebody who's got a deep voice is going to benefit from having a coach in the commercial world because it's going to make them a better mm -hmm. actor. Yeah. And by understanding mm -hmm. that, they're going to excel in promo and trailer and all these other areas. Yeah, and, and okay. what we what we experienced for years and years, at least in New York, was the casting director community were the unofficial coaches for hundreds of talent because yep. the casting director would kind of you know mm -hmm. pull out reads and they would kind of learn while you know auditioning. Um, that doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that said, they almost every talent has to be given kernels in which to make their reads better. And even if you're great, there's that 1% yeah. that can be worth hundreds, if not millions of dollars, yeah. hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of dollars, yeah. if not millions. Yeah. So, you, you know, take the time, take the energy, find somebody who you click with and work with them. And, you know, if you're first starting out, if you have to take 
you, you know, a group class, great. Whatever it is, just get in the game. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, yeah. that's that's beautiful thing that you just said because uh, I've seen so many people that, you know, they're just starting out. They don't even know if they're good at voiceover. And so what should I do? And I'm like, take a class. Right. Take a good class with a group so you can see other people doing it. And when you're done with that class, if it looks like something you'd like to really do, then maybe take another class and then work one-on-one with a coach to really, really Mm -hmm. perfect, hone in your, to your skill. And then when you're ready, you record a demo. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And we know now classes don't have to be like physical classes. Mm-hmm. No. There's online communities. Absolutely. Like that. yeah. That's the beautiful thing yeah. now. It's yeah. like you can live in anywhere and go to an event or or, or a class with 12 people digitally. Yeah. And most coaches are working virtually. So, so most cool. coaches, you don't have to live. So yeah. there's really no reason not to find the right people and, and, and do your research to make sure they are legitimate. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about home studios um, and maybe the importance of what is your guys take on having a home of a talent, having a good home studio? Well, hundred percent of our clients have, have their own studio. home yeah. studios. 100%. 100%. Right. In, in so, some shape or form. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is acceptable? What may not be acceptable? Y- you know, everybody's different. And I'm the first person who will acknowledge that I know of people who work. I I had a client who worked for years from an apartment in New York City above a firehouse. So, you you, you know, he figured it out. He figured it out. You know, he got the setup. Is that the best case scenario? Absolutely not. Again, you know, with the internet now, there's guys who can basically hook you up in, you know, minutes to make things work for you. Yeah. But there's also so much great equipment. Yeah. You, you, you know, the Sennheiser itself, the 460, the 460 has created mm-hmm. an yeah. entire, it saved people hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars in terms of having to renovate their place yeah. and make sure that they had enough egg crate, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But um, it, it's it's vital too, because so, the business is so fast yeah. and we can't get bodies to places fast enough. And it's just easier to say, You'll do this in 45 minutes from mm-hmm. your closet or your the shed. So or for you guys, shed. it's really, yeah, yeah. 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 It's really a prerequisite for you guys. Well, we a- tell absolutely. every buyer yeah. of ours yeah. that every client of ours, you know, especially if it's a new buyer, you yeah. know, they'll say, uh, you know, tell me how it works. I'm like, you know, our clients have their own home studios and, you know, they're not charging for that session, you know, for the, for the recording. Yeah. Um, and we lay that out right out of the gate yeah. because we don't want any confusion that, you know, they hire someone and all of a sudden, you know, they're looking at old school studios, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and working, you know, 2002 yeah. style. Yeah. And it gets uh, back to what- 2002 style, I love that. 1992. <laughs> it gets back to what we were saying at the beginning about yeah. being available 24-7 yeah. is mm-hmm. if you live like New York City, the real estate is ridiculous. So studio prices are- Four or five hundred dollars right. an hour, or right. something like right. that. Yeah. LA rates are a little different, and you know, studios tend to stay open a little bit later. It right. seems like New York studios close at five or six. LA studios maybe stay open until seven or eight. Yeah. But having the home studio makes you viable. Mm-hmm. You know, twenty four yeah. hours. Yeah. We're also in a different situation than even the talent agencies from the standpoint of, you know, theoretically we're checking our email about eight fifteen, eight thirty, and stuff does come through. And, you know, I'm not going to call somebody in L.A. at 5.30 in the morning. Uh, but if I get an email at 8.30 Eastern, I'm going to email them and say, you know, whenever they wake up, hopefully they mm-hmm. see it. And then I'll start calling them when they should be waking up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or send uh, a text or something. But theoretically, we're open from 9 a.m. Eastern time to about 9 Pacific time. Right. So, you, you know, our talent are getting stuff all the time at... You know, if they live on the East Coast, yep. really late. If they live That's on true. the West Coast, really yeah. early. Yep. And I think they appreciate that. I, I think they realize yeah. that, it, you know, because we're bi-coastal. And it's a huge but, advantage to them. It, yeah, it, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. Um, and just to put button, this, the whole studio thing, I just want to button this real quick by, uh, have you guys had, the you know, a situation where, you maybe you took on a talent, but then you heard like their the quality that they're producing out of the studio and said, "Listen, you have to change." This Absolutely. We oh yeah. Send uh, out. Last week. Yeah. Last week. <laughs> last week. So it happens more often than not. Yeah. 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 So I was just going to say this to you, the people out there. There's no excuse for that. 
I mean, nowadays you could buy a great microphone and a, a, a preamp and you have your computer for like nothing compared to what it would cost to invest in a, in a, in a real type business, you know, a brick and mortar type business. So this is not huge and it's a necessity because you guys want to work with that. That's that's how you need to present yourself. Well, and we'll throw another thing too. With ISDN, people ask us, do I have to have ISDN? Our clients don't need to have ISDN when they join with us. Right. But what we tell everybody is, whether it's IBDTL or Source Connect, look up how to order it. Yes. Because Be I ready. might call you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You I might call here. you and say, you need it <laughs> you in an it hour. Tomorrow. And yes. this is how, no, no I, I've had <laughs> people do it in an hour. I oh, mean, wow. You can get it that fast. Yes. 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 You can absolutely. get a Source Connect maybe yeah. in 15 minutes. Right. Exactly. Wow. So it, it's like, make sure you know how to do it. I don't want yeah. you to spend the money, yeah. but I just want you to be prepared that when he's calling Connect you and saying, you know, trial. there's a movie trailer and they have to do it, you know, mm-hmm. we can give them solutions immediately and you all of a sudden have a career. Good. Well, I hope that yeah. everybody just yeah. heard what you just said because that is so important. Yeah. Source that, Connect has a 15-day free trial. There you go. You don't even have to. You can just <laughs> yeah, date absolutely. it. You don't Download have to marry it. it. And learn it. Yeah. yeah and exactly. I think that IPDTL, you can actually rent by the day. Well, you can do daily, monthly. Daily, yeah, monthly, so you don't yeah. Have to so make, there's really exactly. no excuse, but you need to know what it is, how it works, yeah. and how quickly you yeah, get it. Yeah, kind of like do a test like as if you booked something. So mm-hmm. that you understand, because what because ha- I had a client who you know right, I said the first yeah, time you use it yeah, is in a job. I mean it could yeah. be a disaster, yeah. and you don't come across as professional. Like here we are positioning you as a professional voiceover yeah. talent, and you don't know what Source Connect is. Yeah, right, right. And exactly. it can happen like that too. Yeah. Whereas you know, depending on the project, whether it's a commercial or whatever, it's like sometimes you get avails for hey, you know, what day is today? Today is Friday. Sometimes you get avails for Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday mm-hmm. next week. So you think you have plenty of time. But, but in don't. promo and trailer, it's like, is he available? How soon can he record? Yeah, and right. it's, it's two o'clock now. When they say, how soon can he record? Yeah. Or she record? Because, you know, inclusion matters. Um, it could be 15 minutes. It yeah. could be 12 o'clock. It could be, you know, three o'clock. Well, uh, and, and even in commercials, if we get somebody who needs somebody in two hours, the person who called us, their job is probably on the line. Yeah. Yep. So if they can't do that job in two hours, that means the relationship they built with that producer just ended because exactly. there's somewhere else right. in the industry. And that's where you guys yeah. step in and say, yeah. we got you covered. Yeah. That's fantastic. All right, gentlemen, you're on the pulse. <laughs> what are the trends? What are you being asked for? What do you see is swirling around right now in the industry? The trend is everything is out there. Mm. And, it, you know, we, we're talking about like commercial people or promo people or trailer people. They may not be that person in a year. And it's because there is so much different work. There's, you know, I said earlier, there's more business. There's more business because there's more entertainment. There's more advertising. There's more corporate work, et cetera. And it's not going to end anytime soon. Um, As long as, you know, just take entertainment, for instance. Mm -hmm. Let's use animation. How many animated shows are there now? There's just dozens and dozens and dozens yeah, right. and dozens. And now with well, Amazon and, and Netflix, well, that, that, all those guys yeah. producing animation as well. It, it, exactly. And, you know, as great as some of those animation people are who work on six, seven, ten shows simultaneously, yeah. there's not enough roles. <laughs> they, yeah. they, they need new people. Yeah. But the so. future is working remotely and digitally, yeah. okay? That, that because does, yeah. what, what kind of accounts are we seeing now that we didn't see in the past? I have a campaign running three months on Instagram, okay? So that's telling us, you know, this is a remote business. The future is is yeah. of that nature. Um, and and stay connected and keep, you know, keep in touch. Look at what social media is doing. I, mean, I was going to ask you, what role do you think social media is playing? Um, we it, made, well, we made a concerted effort to be ahead of the curve and especially be ahead of the curve, you know, with social media. And, and we have, you know, specific initiatives um, that are tied to Twitter, which, you know, has become a, a monster. Yeah. You know, we're ranked number three ahead of Mark Hamill. Um, we are, you know, we have an Instagram account that is just exploding. We have a LinkedIn initiative that, you know, has, you know, take, really taken off. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and with that comes 
the connection to the voiceover world. So, you know, we, that's where I see these entrepreneurs. You know, we're talking about demos. We're talking about what accounts, you know, are, are you currently on that, that are impressive? How about, you know, hustling every day because social media allows you to do that. Get my attention. We sign people. Right. You know, I've signed a bunch of people off of Twitter. I was going to ask you, do you... Do you look at not only the presence, but the the approach to people's social media? Have you ever looked at yeah, someone's account yeah, and said, yeah. listen, this is not a, a responsible, appropriate way? Or how much, not just the number of followers, well, well, but they're... I'm not saying that, you know, we have some special intuition when it comes to social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we have worked with actors and performers for years and years there is a certain degree of puffery, as we know, in social yeah. media. Right. Yeah. So we we generally have a good sense. But, we, and, the, but the reason we didn't... The, I, I started the radio imaging business. Yeah. The, I sent CDs to every radio station in the country. They waited. They salivated for the you know these program directors for yeah. the next CD. But it took me this long, because we're relaunching soon. Right. For our radio voices launching soon. Right. And here we are... Now, because we finally feel comfortable that we have this real interesting marketing approach that could replicate and take marketing to a whole new level because, you know, we now are invested in an exclusive marketing um, uh, mechanism that, you know, we're really excited about. So we're going to integrate that into you know, this launch. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, as much as I really want to do, because I've heard for years, you know, you know, are you doing it? Are you doing it? I just didn't want to do it until the program directors out there and the general managers and the presence of these radio companies could just see a new, fresh approach, like an album, you know, that we Mm -hmm. dedicated to a CD because it wasn't just a CD. It was, you know, an album and we, and we were very meticulous about it. So I love that you guys think about the future, man. Well, well, yeah, yeah, we we said we want our talent to be versatile. (laughs) Yeah. We have to be versatile versatile in our thinking. Yeah. Yeah. What about the talent with social media? Is that like super important too? It, It is, but they have to be as careful as we are. <laughs> exactly. You don't yeah. want people ranting and getting into trouble. I mean, we've seen people lose jobs. Yeah. 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 Because, it, it, yeah. I, I mean, there's no question that people are checking social media yeah. profiles, mm-hmm. you, you know, even if it's just an advertiser. Um, somebody might say something politically or, you know, they might say something flip that they don't yep. mean, that people don't understand yep. mm-hmm. is not what they intended, yeah, but it's careful. what's written yeah. on, you know, the profile. But our industry is... Tweet responsibly. Right, exactly. Yeah. But our industry is probably the only industry, uh, genre of entertainment that, is, you know, that is digital. And mm-hmm. the future of it is way beyond, you know, digital times, you know, whatever yeah. it is. So, you know, you, you know we could operate our business from, a, a, you know, this small area and yeah. and a successful voiceover talent can explode and have an amazing career by, you know, doing everything from their phone, you know, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and it's all there. Yep. Yeah. It's incredible, man. So cool. Love it. Really, really cool stuff. Um, I think we need to do a mystery question. I think so Andrew? too. You know what? Grab the cube, uh, Andrew. Uh, uh, how does this work? Uh, Andrew, just pass that cube. Just grab a card. Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll grab do, a card. Do we have to it. answer in the form of a question or no? <laughs> you oh, can. Well, now no. I'm going to send it back you to you. Can. So I want. So pick a card and any card from anywhere, and then you'll each get your own card because there's certainly plenty. We want your own. And no. then um, <laughs> <laughs> who wants to go first? I'll go first. All right, Phil. All right. Which writer from the past, present, or future would you like to get a personal letter from? Mm. Um, Stanley just passed away. I, I, I do definitely appreciate yeah. what he's done. Yeah. But if he could write a letter for me right now, that would be an amazing thing. Oh, yeah. oh my Stanley, God. <laughs> you would be famous. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So that's great, man. Yeah. What about you, Andrew? What do you guys? Um, mine says, "What age seems old to you?" Wait, or am I answering that question? <laughs> no, no, no. no, no you you're answering your mine says, "What age seems old to you?" So it, this is you know, <laughs> that's a good one. It, well, it's a good that's one. But really what's interesting good. is what Stanley was at ninety five. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I, I think you're as age you're as old as you feel. I mean, Completely. you look at somebody yes. like that who was so spectacular. He made ninety five. He did. Yeah, he was <laughs> I mean, George Burns was an idol of mine, mm-hmm. and he was, what, 100, 102 when he passed? And, it's crazy. And just how witty and how brilliant he was yeah. at that yeah. time. So yeah. 
I, I would say looking at this question and thinking of people like that, 125, 115 yes. <laughs> would seem old. Yeah. You're, you know what? I love that. Yeah. And you're right. That's great. Yeah. Great yeah. answer. Thanks. Very All right, cool. Mark, bring in, bring it home, baby. How have your taste buds changed over the years? <laughs> Mark, well, I mean, I think you would appreciate this <laughs> yes. because we're almost in the same boat as far. I mean, I used to be here as far as like, eat, you know, like I would, there were a lot of categories of, you know, what I would eat. And I'm kind of like down to here because, you know, the, I think the more you live, the more you understand what you're eating and, and what it is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because of, you know, just issues of uh, my love for animals and, and yes. beyond, yeah. um, you know, I think that has a direct correlation of where my taste buds are. Um, so, Very good, man. yeah, and but we, but it needs to be tasty still, right? But yes. we yeah, don't yeah. need to right. have anybody right. uh, hurt. That's fantastic. Yeah. What's man. always my mantra? You see, nothing tastes as good as healthy food. Exactly, it and is. No and one I should love get that. hurt. No one should get hurt that. to fill my stomach. Yeah, I think. man, yeah. you guys are just so so fabulous. freaking cool, man. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, you're Such real people first. You know, you're just like so grounded and so down to earth. And all of you really, really, really nice guys who are, you take professionalism to the to the hilt, yeah. um, because everything you do is triple A. I mean, just top notch. So. Thank you for everything Thanks that for you do for our them. community. Thanks for being here and for everything you do. You yes. are truly, truly superb human beings. Woo! Um, Get down, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you guys. ACM all right. talent. ACM talent. All right, and that concludes our interview with Mark, Phil, and Andrew of ACM Talent Management. These guys are awesome. Amazing. We love them. We love you guys for watching. Make sure to follow all of us on social and just remember, you, you always have time, time for a little buzz. This is Mark Gus. We just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. I want to hear your demo. And hopefully it's top notch. This is Phil Sutton. I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy, and I really hope we helped you with your career. And this is Andrew Atkin. Uh, I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. Uh, we look forward to hearing your demos and uh, keep watching uh, VO Buzz Weekly. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.